Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Chatters, welcome back to Indie Horror News. This is the second time we've done this. And I guess it's going to be a continuing series now. I don't know. I'm thinking maybe we'll do this like every two weeks. It's been about two and a half weeks since we last did it. And you guys seem to really like it. It went over really well. It got a pretty decent amount of concurrent viewers. Um, it got... Um, it has a pretty decent amount of total views. People in chat seem to be really excited about the format. Um, Finding Frankie, the channel, the team behind it appeared in chat. Um, and the indie indie horror as a landscape is pretty active and large. So there's always stuff to talk about. And it's been only two, uh, two or three weeks and we have a lot to talk about. So... I think we're just going to keep this a uh, going thing. If I don't know if I'm the best at it, but I do feel like um, there's a lot of like news reporters within certain communities that do a really great job. Um, like Johnny Blocks is a great source of FNAF news, the number one source of FNAF news even. Um, love Johnny, by the way. Uh, Nized is a great news reporter in like uh, the Poppy Playtime sphere. Um, shout out to Shout out to them as well. Um, but, uh, I feel like this is a good way to just, uh, talk about, it's, it's a more freeing format to do this on a live stream. We can kind of just have a extensive conversation about it as opposed to making it a condensed video. Uh, and also we can cover a lot of stuff here. Like I, I'm kind of just, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I, I just, I just cover all of it. Like indie horror as an entire field, I want to cover, so... Yeah, uh, I have plenty of stuff here. Um, I don't know if I even have everything. There's probably a couple things that I'm missing because there's always so much news going on. So uh, hopefully not, though. Um, but yeah, we're going to start off with the biggest news. This just completely came out of nowhere and I was made aware of it basically immediately. Um, Bendy Secrets of the Machine, a Bendy, an official Bendy game coming out in just 10 days. This was essentially shadow announced, if that's the right term. This, th th we, there was like no indication this was happening. Um, the developer is listed as Gent Corporation, which is a, I believe, a separate studio in canon. Like, Joey Drew Studios is the publisher of Bendy, but also... Um, a studio in universe. I believe Gent Corporation is a is also a different studio in universe. Um, Bendy seeks of the machine. The description is just some things are better left forgotten. Um, if we go further below, uh, I believe people have decoded this. This apparently says subject the uh, subject machine. Apparently, this just says machine. I don't remember exactly how that was translated. Property of Gent Corporation, no unauthorized viewing or interaction, danger, unstable. Discover the interactable secrets of the machine by exploring Gent's creation and solving the puzzles within. Lurking amongst the shadows are glimpses to the past, the present, and the future of the dark puddles. But stay alert, this realm changes often. Explore the drawing room, solve the secrets within, unravel the interactive mystery, stay close for updates. So yeah, this game will be continuously updated after launch, and it is free. This game will be free on launch. Um... And it's only 10 days away. This just looks like Sheriff Toadster. I can't, I can't, I cannot see it as anything else. It just looks like Sheriff Toadster, but it looks very good. Uh, these screenshots are definitely a level of quality uh, on par with like the Dark Revival. However, uh, they're much more dark, so not as much to be taken away from that. But there is a little trailer question mark, not so much a trailer, but... Um, we're gonna go ahead and give this a watch. Uh, it's probably gonna be very loud. I'll moderate the volume. Um, but yeah, this video is very weird, very cryptic. Let's give it a watch. God. So yeah, it's loud. 
Um, yeah, I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's very weird. Very cryptic. I'm not sure what this game's gonna be like at all. Um, yeah, it's, it's very weird, very mysterious. This says gent. Um, this is screams. I don't know what that's gonna be in lore. Um, and yeah, I, apparently, I don't know. I, I, I'm not the biggest bendy head. Uh, maybe someone in chat will know what I'm talking about. Apparently, this location that you see here does appear in one of the videos? One of the... Was it in an April Fool's video? I'm not sure. This is clearly not an April Fool's joke because it was put up af after April Fool's and it's very much fleshed out and also they put it up on fucking steam um yeah i i don't know what this is going to be i i'm gonna stream it day one i'm gonna check it out um yeah this is very strange but exciting because again since the dark revival i've been very interested in what bendy has on the way uh the cage and this are both scheduled to release this year so that's going to be this is gonna be a pretty big year for bendy as a series um the unironic year of the ink demon um i'm noticing horror is weirdly listed low on here but these are popular user defined this doesn't actually mean anything um yeah this is going to be um hopefully cool hopefully fun i don't know exactly it has a very distinct uh style as far as the horror approach of this video compared to the rest of the Bendy series, I have no idea what to expect from this. Um, I wish I could see this as anything other than Sheriff Toadster. Um, but, no, yeah, this this just was suddenly revealed. Uh, well, barely even revealed. It just appeared. Like, I have not seen the Meatly or anyone else address this to any significant degree. Um, but, hey, new Bendy content. Looking forward to it. Looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, only 10 days away. Also in the Bendy news, though, we got a little bit more, uh, because Gaming Age, my, my, my goat, wanted me to mention this. Uh, the Meatly on Twitter has said that uh, there has been exciting progress on the Bendy movie. They can't talk about it yet, but it's good to know it's being worked on. I, I think a big thing with the FNAF movie, aside from it taking so long, was that uh, people were kind of like... It, people... people didn't like the ra the constant radio silence, so I th it wouldn't surprise me if the Melee kind of saw that and wanted to bypass that. Um, but yeah, uh, exciting progress on the Bendy movie. That's always cool to see. I'm not the most... In I'm not anticipating the Bendy movie the most, personally, because, personally, I would want an animated Bendy movie. That's what I would want most. I don't really care to see a live-action Bendy movie. But, uh, right people involved could be good, could be great. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I don't know how much I'm looking forward to it, but I'm interested. Also, in the news, content warning. This game has been popping off. Uh, this game was released on April Fool's Day. Not a joke, though. Um, this is a multiplayer indie horror game. That was released uh, on Steam on April Fool's, and it was made free for 24 hours, where it was installed 6 million times, over 6 million times, in one day, because it was made free for that time. Uh, this is very much uh, clearly inspired by like the wave of uh, multiplayer indie horror games. Uh, definitely inspired by Lethal Company, though at the same time, I'm not sure how long this would have had to have been developed to be that inspired by Lethal Company, but it must be inspired by Lethal Company. Um, get Famous or Die Trying. Content Warning is a co-op horror game where you film spooky stuff with your friends to try and go viral, which is just such an adorable idea for a game, and it looks very silly, and I will definitely play it at some point. Spooktube. Um, I just, I don't know, I haven't put together a group or anything. This is, Again, this just fucking came out of nowhere and has been absolutely popping off. Um, two to four players, has voice chat, uh, make and save in-game recordings, um, yeah, and, uh, some of the material here does actually look, like, genuinely spooky, um, which is cool, but it also just looks really silly and fun. We have a little, we have a trailer, um, 
So let's give this a watch. Citrus, we need to take this camera. This is Citrus's first game, by the way, guys. Uh, say hi in the comments to Citrus Bird. We need to go in Hello. into that ship, um, film cool stuff for our viewers, and then upload the video and make views, which make us money, to make more views and more money. So let's go. Hoorah! All right, we've landed, we've touched down. So now we're gonna try finding something scary to get on, to get on film for you guys. All right, so we've just been suggested. Can you touch it? Yeah. I can't rush that. <laughs> oh, you jump! Oh, keep running, keep running! Don't look back! Don't look back! Okay, okay. We gotta move. We gotta move. Is that thing? Is that Welcome back to another video. I really dig some of the scares. But also the game just looks adorable. This looks like a very cute, very fun, somewhat spooky time. I'm sure I'll play it at some point. Um, it, it genuinely looks really good. And this game came out of nowhere and has been exploding it is it is done it is done very very well um so shout out to them this is from uh, the same devs as cluster truck if i'm not mistaken who are now i guess publishing their own games because cluster truck was uh published under tiny build so i guess they're just completely doing things on their own now i, I guess um but yeah this is uh this game is a really big release for the indie horror space right now so shout out to them game looks pretty good uh check it out if you haven't i i will certainly get around to doing so uh, sometime soon next up we're talking about fnaf which i've never said a single negative thing about ever so this is from mega cat studios mega cat studios is the developer behind the upcoming fnaf into the pit game which um i will say I'm looking forward to. I I don't necessarily think it looks great, but what I'm most looking forward to is um, the Fighters of Freddy's franchise moving in a more unique and creative direction, trying out different things with titles, um, and making something completely distinct from what we're used to in the series. So, uh, Mega Cat Studios working on the game. They posted this. Now, you may have seen a little thing there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it exactly. There it is. Um, yeah, they snuck in a little screenshot of gameplay. Um, so, okay, so it's from, so Jeff is speaking in this screenshot, who is owner of the pizzeria in the story. Uh, oh, something will... Oh, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to make this out, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it says. Um, but yeah, the game uh, is uh, had a little teaser. It's making progress, seemingly. Uh, it is an anniversary game. I'm expecting it to come out in August. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to fucking pause in there. Shout out to Johnny Blux. Uh, but yeah, this is the image. Uh, and this is the uh, game's image. Uh, just like a recreation of um, the, uh, what the fuck is it called? Uh, creation, recreation of the short story cover. Uh, someone here is trying to decode it. It says, oh, someone with the name Blah Larson's called by. Definitely doesn't say Everett. I'm not sure. I can't quite decode this. But, yeah, uh, Mega Cast Studios uh, for April Fool's released a little, like, promotional type of video and they snuck in a little uh one frame only teaser which is cute very fnaf core love to see it um and yeah i'm actually looking forward to this game i'm just excited to see the fnaf franchise um experiment a little more in the future so yeah that was cool 
uh, but also in FNAF news. And trust me, I'm the last person that would usually care to talk about this. But, upcoming FNAF book. I would n usually never talk about this. But look, I'm a FNAF boomer. And this is... Uh, th th I, this is something that appeals to me. This is the Five Nights at Freddy's interactive novel, which is titled The Week Before. And the theory is, and the very, very likely theory is, that this is a book about Phone Guy. So, just in time for the 10th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, return to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in this interactive novel in which you decide what happens. Return to where it all began in this interactive prequel to the first, to the very first Five Nights at Freddy's game. You, the reader, are the security guard, and you've got five nights, or is it six, to survive Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, and Foxy as they try to wipe you out. With over 25 different possible endings and two difficulty settings, this one-of-a-kind innovative novel is a uniquely entertaining experience for any Freddy fan. I'm really looking forward to that. It's like a way more creative take on a Five Nights at Freddy's story than the normal ones are. And it's like from what I would what I would personally call the golden age of FNAF. And bro, one of my first ever like big videos on this channel was my video about Phone Guy. And that video was basically just cope. It was a theory about Phone Guy that was most definitely not true. I didn't even believe it to be true. I just really wanted Phone Guy to mean something. Because I'm a FNAF boomer. I like old FNAF. Old FNAF makes me happy. And I don't like change. I'm a very conservative individual when it comes to my frombo. Um, so, a book that's like this creative focused on one of the most, like... Important, unimportant characters ever in the series. Like, such a such a character you think would play so much significance that is completely irrelevant. Um, that's just exciting to me, to see that be explored in this kind of way. Um, again, shout out to Johnny Blocks for being a very helpful source of um, some of this stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this, genuinely. I, I will be buying, I will be reading the hell out of this. And yeah, I, 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 this, this is the first time I've cared about a FNAF book release since 2015. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very excited for this. All right, next up, right. Just want to say shout out to Nized, uh, because the screenshots that I'm about to use came from their news video on this. Check them out. Why am I not subscribed to you? Let's fix that. Nice is pretty goaded with the Zumbo sauce. If you're a Poppy Playtime fan, um, just go check just check them out. They're very on top of this stuff. Um, so, CEO of Mob Entertainment has addressed both Poppy Playtime Chapter 4 and Project Playtime uh, recently in the Discord server. Um, in this screenshot, they say, I did want to let you guys know that Chapter 4 development is going really well right now. We spent so much energy in the last year to hire amazing people, and we are seeing better and better things happen as a result of our increased internal expertise. Um... Which is good to hear. Uh, I mean, again, they're the CEO. They kind of have to say things that make the company look good. So, I'm not necessarily saying this means everything that's... Like, this doesn't necessarily mean every problem that could have been derived from people leaving is being fixed. But... There's a lot of people in Poppy, a lot of people uh, that worked on the first two and the first three chapters of Poppy Playtime. Um were left Mob Entertainment before or shortly after the release of Chapter 3. And uh, a lot of those people obviously need to be replaced. A lot of the people, though, have obviously stayed on board. There's plenty of talented people working in Mob. I have spoken to some of them. But yeah, a lot of them need to be replaced because people have left. And uh, it's good to know they're on top of that. And, Ch and uh, Zach, as well as other people, have said plenty of times that... Um, Chapter 4 will not take nearly as long as Chapter 3. Because the entirety of Project and Chapter 3 were both made in the time between Chapter 2 and 3's release. And also, presumably, given um, the uh, increase of price for Chapter 3 and the amount of um, notor uh, like notoriety the series has continued to get, the amount of like praise Chapter 3 has been given definitely raised sales. 
definitely did very well. We all know Chapter 3 did very well. So I imagine there's going to be more people on board to work on separate things. Like Poppy Playtime Forever, for example, is an entirely different studio. Uh, that's just simply uh, licensed. So Chapter 4 will not take nearly as long. This is just Zach Belanger saying that it's going well and we're, they're hiring people on board to work on it. And as well as that, we have a Project Playtime update, kind of. I know our team wouldn't want me to get into the details of our plans for project right now, so I won't, but I will say that we absolutely are going to do many, many things to it. Internally, we are mainly focused on Chapter 4 and the development of a new exciting game. So I guess this isn't the most reassuring thing, but, I mean, to me, what this reads as, and I've always thought this, is Project is simply a game that was too big and ambitious for the size of the studio to release when it did to be realistic. Like, it was just it was just unrealistic to release that game when they did, continue to keep it updated, work on other things, run the studio at the size that it was. It was just a completely unrealistic thing. So the fact that Project's development has slowed down so tremendously because of the development of the actual chapters, just, yeah, that makes complete sense to me. Little Nightmares is not indie anymore. Um... So yeah, th no nothing about, like, Project's slow development is, like, surprising to me. Um, however, I mean, it is nice to know that they have it in mind. It's nice to know that it's something they haven't abandoned. However, like, again, I just don't expect... I just don't expect anything soon, and I don't expect anything major soon. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure they have plenty of ideas, and I'm sure they want to do good things with it, and I know they have the ability to do great things with it. But I don't think it's a realistic expectation to expect it anytime soon. But they've addressed it. It's there. Hopefully soon. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. All right. Next up. Don't fret. The upcoming music-based mascot horror game from Rocket Music slash Rocket Gaming. Uh, we watched um, we watched uh, their trailer and also their first like devlog video in the last uh, news recap. Uh, we got a new uh, teaser trailer out. It's a minute and 30 seconds. Um, there's a phone number here. That's interesting. So, yeah. Don't fret. Teaser trailer 2. Call me. Uh, let's check this one out. I'm quite looking forward to this one. So, let's let it go. I may be... I don't know. I want to read that. What the hell does that say? I may be done, but I can help. I may be done, but I can help the others. C-120. Okay. That was really strange, but actually, like, don't fret. That was actually pretty cool, though. Like, there was a lot of detail put into these little ads. I'm not sure. I am really not sure what significance this could possibly play as far as the game goes. Um, hang on, I want to get to when it shows the school. Okay, at first I thought this was like growling, but it appears to be like 
crying. Hey, I just met you. God, oh, call me. What are you so afraid of? I don't know, this, uh, this captures like a, I don't know, this captures a very eerie feeling at the end here. I'm not 100% sure if I'm meant to be able to make out what the words are saying. Call me? Here's my number. Huh, that's really strange. Um, no, yeah, I, I am quite looking forward to this game. I'm just, re again, I'm so curious what approach they're going to take, because I don't really understand what a music, I, I still don't really understand what a music-based uh, mascot horror game will look like. We did see some of the mascots in the last trailer. Uh, well, one of them at least. Well, and the main character is a mascot based on an instrument. Um, and we saw a mascot based on a cassette tape, and all the children didn't know what a cassette tape was. Um, but yeah, this, this is, I don't know, this is leading me to believe it's going to go in a more, it's going to try to be scarier more so than I expect it would. Um, I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what I was expecting as a thing, again, because this is, this is a music-based mascot horror game. I'm still not 100% sure what that means, I'm not really sure exactly what tone or style they want to go for. I think this looks really cool, and I think, um, this does make me more excited. Wait, what the fuck? I don't know about that one. Um, but yeah, this does look cool. And again, the darker aesthetic of this teaser here um, does make me more curious. But I don't know. I Again, I just I need to see more of the game um, as it goes along in development before I can say that much about it. Because I just, I still am just so confused as to what what the tone of this game will be like. I'm just really unsure. Um, but this is a good teaser. It's a teaser trailer, not a trailer. Those are different things. So, um, it's cool. It's, it's, it's cool. But I'm still so confused by this project. Um, but I, I'm very much looking forward to it because I don't know, like, I, we saw the devlog from Rocket, the person Rocket. Uh, Rocket Music is just one person. They're not. The, they're not the only one making the game. But Rocket Rocket Music is one person. This is their first game, and they're very passionate about this project. And as and they, as a lover of uh, of clearly the mascot horror space and music, I'm really looking forward to. Um, seeing where their passions lead them with this project i'm i'm just so interested in that this does look cool i'm looking forward to this i'm i'm, I'm really looking forward to this one uh moving on uh okay we got non mascot horror so i'm about to lose a lot of you um crow country crow country is a survival horror game with a ps1 aesthetic that i've been made aware of for a while and it officially has a release date of may 9th one of the devs here um, has, uh, confirmed, and also the Steam page has been updated, it will be coming out May 9th. Um, uh, this is the announcement of that. We are just going to go ahead and look at the Steam page, though. Um, let's just start off by looking at the trailer. We'll start off by looking at the trailer. Um, this is Crow Country, survival horror, PS1 style. This is the release date trailer. Looks very, very charming. Very, very charming. There's a lot of things about it that make that make it feel really authentic to the era. May 9th, 2024. That's pretty soon. 
This game looks really good, honestly. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, so, uh, uh, some of you, uh, some if not most of you, are probably hearing about this for the first time, so we'll go over the Steam page. Uh, a survival horror game where, you, where you'll test yourself against puzzles and riddles as you investigate the eerie tranquility of the abandoned theme park. Don't be deceived by the whimsical surroundings. Something is awfully wrong in Crow Country. Uh, explore the park. As you unlock new areas, backtrack, discover more, you gradually piece together why Edward really shut down his park and where he mysteriously disappeared to. You've heard some pretty disturbing rumors, but they couldn't possibly be true, right? For visitors to the park, for visitors to the park who are more interested in spotting crows and taking in the sights, exploration mode allows you to journey on without the fear of being attacked by the mysterious monsters roaming, roaming crow country. If you knew what these, if you knew what those monsters really are. Uh, just how far would someone go to follow their ambition? Are some sins too wicked for redemption? A tale of reckless hubris and human greed, and now at the center of it all, you. Who are you really? Uh, Mara? We're gonna go with Mara. Never seen that name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been made aware of this game for a little bit. Uh, it looks really good. It looks very authentic to the era. It looks really fun to play. It looks like just a very well put together survival horror game. Um, the trailer was really nice, and to have a release date that's pretty soon is exciting. Bro, fam, you are dead. Um, and also there are yeah, some of the environments are really charming here. Like this taking place in like an amusement park with arcade like areas and stuff like this. A lot of really charming part. A lot of really like charming environmental work, but also a seemingly pretty scary survival horror game yeah, i think i think there could be some good scares working this but ultimately it just looks fun to play mainly this looks fun to play and i'm really looking forward to this one uh does this dev have other games i actually don't even know right yes they um they have uh they have a couple forgot about those but yeah i'm really looking forward to crow country there is a demo available forgot to mention that there is a demo available if anyone wants to go play the demo um i usually don't play demos i do sometimes i haven't played this one um but with it being a month away, I'll just wait to the game, I think. But, yeah, really looking forward to this one. Uh, go wishlist it, go play the demo, go show the devs some love and support on this one. Um, yeah, Crow Country. Looks like it'll be a really good survival horror game. Really excited to see this in the indie scene. Because uh, with my video that released yesterday, I mentioned survival horror is really underrepresented in the indie space. And that is unfortunate. Um... So seeing something like this release in the near future is really, really exciting to me. So yeah, Crow Country's on the way. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be really fun. Like, just, it just, it looks like, oh my god, wait, you get to play basketball? This is huge. Yeah, and I, I, again, I love the environmental work, especially. I'm really excited to see the environmental work in this one, and if I haven't made it very clear throughout my entire career... I like the low-poly style a lot. I love low-poly games that feel truly authentic to the era that they are trying to recreate. And this looks like it does a really good job. This looks like it does a really, really good job. So, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it'll be a great time. Alright. Next up, Zucosis. Yes, Zucosis. Upcoming indie horror game from the same devs as Sparky Marky. Which is why I'm not entirely sold on it. <laughs> but this game looks really good. And I'm interested in seeing uh, the new trailers that have been released. Uh, an official reveal trailer was uh, done at this showcase. Never heard of this in my life. Future Games Showcase 12 days ago. And an official gameplay teaser trailer came out 8 days ago. Um, this game looks really good, so let's go in with an open mind. Next up. Uh, okay, yeah, let's watch this showcase. I'm not sure what this is. Holy shit, it's my stream. We've got a brand new trailer for a game that's already had hundreds of thousands of you smashing that wish list button. This is Zucosis. It's just weird how good this game looks, given the dev that it comes from.
good this looks compared to Sparky Marky is the thing. Um, no, but yeah, like, the the lack of a mascot kind of aesthetic for the monster designs is appealing to me, for sure. I like the way, I like the way it feels just like a little more of a freakish and decrepit version of the zoo animals, as opposed to being very mascot-y. The overall quality of the graphics and environment seems to be good. Um, not sure, here's the thing, I'm not sure how fun it's gonna be. Like, that's just the main thing. I don't know, that's, that's the main thing it comes down to. I don't know how fun this game is gonna be. And I don't know how much the visuals are just like, I don't know how much the visuals are just like a way to convince people that see it that this game will be good. Because that's like entirely plausible. Again, I don't want to be too biased here or anything, but the thing is, Sparky Marky is excluding the games that I would put in should be illegal tier. This is Sparky Marky's... One of the worst, like, top five worst indie horror titles. Like, quite easily. In fact, it's, like, at the bottom of that list. Um, but yeah, uh, the next one says gameplay. Teaser trailer. So, the last one, some animation work looked cool. Again, I'm, I'm, I like their approach to the horror, being less focused on the mascot part of mascot horror. Um, this is a gameplay teaser, tra te te teaser trailer. I speak English. Um... So let's let, let's let's see let's see. Floods in Australia. Spawn oh my god. There are webs everywhere. Ew. Thank God I don't live in Australia. True. Amen. Gross spiders. Whoa, buddy. How did you get out? Ah! That was a very, very tame reaction. <laughs> very tame reaction for what we saw there. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this, I mean, again, this looks really good. I, hopefully we see some gameplay and hopefully it's good. But I mean. Well, buddy, how did you get out? I, I like the, I like the way it looks. I like the way it looks. Night Zookeeper. Pulp Connolly. We'll bring fresh meat soon and wait for notifications. For now, get to work. And don't mess it up. Okay, so this and device here, it seems to, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be like a way to, yeah, it, I can tell by the prompts and stuff. I think this is going to be a way to interact with the environment. Sparky Marky has something fairly similar, however, it's handled, um, how you say, the worst it could possibly be. Um, so... Hopefully this is better. I mean, it looks fine. This is a checklist, clearly, but there's other tabs. Um, so I assume it'll be for... I, I assume it'll be for interacting with certain things. Um, this is 1998 on it. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't know. For now, get to work. And don't mess it up. I'm not sure what this what's going on here. Are they like experimenting on animals to mutate them to then farm them? Is that what they're doing? Is that the lore? And then some of them are turning spooky and creepy and gonna murder you? That's what I'm That's what I'm that's 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 what I'm assuming. Meat. Shout out to meat. Okay. Oh, okay, so there is... Oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. Okay. So it's like... You're actually working in, like... The farming factory. So let's go with that. I, I'm, I'm, I, have, I have a great vocabulary. Don't... don't, don't you don't want to fuck... You, you don't want to mess with the likes of me. Um, okay. So this is, like, tasks relating to, like, the actual job in universe. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of Happies now that I think about it, in that regard. Kinda. Ish. Food is ready! What's it about? Fuck. Hey guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this dude. Oh man. This is gonna be a banger of a game, isn't it? 
That, that is that is this is going to be this is gonna be a banger, isn't it? <laughs> this is gonna be fire. Hey, okay. Cuties. So you actually have to like look after the animals and take care of them and do certain things for them. Daisy. Okay, that's that's cool. I like that. Hey, hey. don't fight. Damn, I need to hurry up. Uh, wait, so but again, like, what does that mean? What's the lore? What's 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 the lore that <laughs> I'm so curious what this is gonna be like in canon. Okay, so everything's normal. You take care of the animals, and then this fucking dude shows up. Why? <laughs> Damn. I need to hurry up. Time to take your medicine, buddy. Okay, I see. So, the mutated animals do kill the non-mutated animals, and you need to tranquilize them. Ha! Huh. I mean, this did show me more of the game, and it does look good. This does just look like a good game. I'm very intrigued to see the direction this goes in. I think this has a very good chance to have some decent horror. The story and lore will probably be, um... I, I mean, it'll, it'll probably be fairly generic if it's just the fucking corrupt factory corporation um, is mutating animals and sometimes they turn spooky and we don't know why and they start killing animals and probably people. You know, I, I don't expect that much out of it, but I mean, they could still work with that premise to be more interesting and distinct if it's uh, fleshed out properly. Um, and... Looks like it could be. Looks like it could be a fun time. It's uh, and uh, I, 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 I just hope that the story and gameplay are both fleshed out to a degree at which um, it's just like a generally solid game. Uh, I think it has potential for sure. Uh, again, I'm just uh, a part of me is still skeptical because it is from the Sparky Marky devs, and Sparky Marky is not done. This game is in development, and so is Sparky Marky Online and Sparky Marky Episode Three. So like, I don't know. But, it looks good. This game looks good. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this. I really am. Um, I really hope, I really hope this ends up the, the best I could. Um... I hope this ends up being the best it could be, because yeah, this could be this could have a pretty fun and fresh uh, gameplay formula. Uh, I absolutely think uh, the monster designs, the approach to the monster designs, is much different than other mascot horror games, and I appreciate that. Um, and graphically, it's nice. Um, I mean, it's definitely a UE five game, so that doesn't like mean that much, but like, looks nice. S style is fine. Voice acting's a little silly, but I think that actually adds some charm. A, it says it's a body cam horror simulation game. I'm not getting body cam from this, but like, well, well sorry. I mean, I, I I more so mean I don't see a reason for this to be body cam horror, but it's fine. Identify infected mutant animals, make a vaccine, and cure them. Okay, so that's the end goal. Will you save all of them and survive? Um, yeah, this game I think will be pretty cool. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and. This is a good trailer for sure. This is a good trailer. I hope we get a little more of a release window at some point. Um, but I, I also I have no idea how far along development this is. So I, I won't expect that necessarily to happen anytime soon. But hope, I, I hope we do see it. I hope we see this in the semi-near future. Because I'd love to see that Sparky Marky Redemption arc uh, from these guys. Um, yeah, this looks good. This looks cool. Looking forward to it. Good trailer. Good work. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, some people here, I played this on stream. Some people will remember that, and some people will just remember this. No Players Online was a very small itch game that had an ARG, like, attached to it. 
Um, but the game itself was very small. Pretty cool for what it was, but very small. No Players Online is getting a full From the Ground Up remake um, that'll be fully on Steam, fully fleshed out, fully a, a full game. A true full game. This is an announcement from one of the devs. Um, we already have a Steam page, though. No players online. You find an abandoned FPS game on a little computer, you decide to play it. Simple premise. No players online. Really looking forward to this. Because I think the premise and concept was really cool, and honestly executed totally fine. It was just very empty if you weren't around to see the way the... Um, ARG play out like if you, if you weren't around for that which I wasn't it was very nothing um this looks this seems to be like a full fleshed out version of it though and I can't wait to see that let's look at the announcement trailer in every home, business, and school. Minesweeper. This is just the announcement trailer, and it appears to have a lot of content, especially if you compare it to the original. It seems, I assume it's going to have, like, a focus on, like, analog horror style uh, cutscenes. Thank you, Bomberman3001, for the $2. No players online, more like no bitches online. So true. Um... Yeah, it seems to have like a focus on maybe analog horror style cutscenes. It's you it's very obvious you'll be able to do so much more with the computer than you did in the original game, being able to explore files, being able to uh, play different things on it and explore different things on it. Uh, the uh, but the base concept and formula of the first person shooter game is very much integral to it, clearly. Um, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to see more of that. Uh, I just think I again, I just think the premise is cool i just think the concept is cool um there is a gameplay trailer as well and i haven't actually seen this one um it's two and a half minutes wow okay let's uh let's, let's give it a go i just think the idea of like an abandoned old fps game from like the early 2000s and like booting and booting that up being like one of two people online I, I just I think it's just such a cool idea. I'd love to see a full game version of that, and I'm so happy we're getting that. Yeah, there's just, uh, there just appears to be so much more to do, which is really exciting to me. Minesweeper. I'm really bad at Minesweeper, but it is fun. Um, you can change files and shit. Yeah, I do think... Um, I could make the argument we've almost reached a point where, like... Jesus Christ, those sounds. Where, like, a friend request. Uh, I could almost make the argument that we ha we are, like... In a, like, the, uh, abandoned computer that you can explore files on trope is, like, becoming a little more saturated at this point. But I wouldn't say it's reached oversaturation yet. Um, especially because some of them are really bad and quickly forgotten about because of how bad they are, such as 98XX. Um, 
So I'm very open to seeing more of them uh, if they take a different approach to the others. Uh, like Kanito Pet, for example, obviously came out this year, and it's very different than what we've seen before. And it's pretty fucking fantastic, if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, and like this is... Uh, this clearly has a lot of content in it. Again, I'm very interested in how much content this game will have. Okay, we got a friend request. Thanks for sending my friend request. Hey, who are you? I want to play a game. It's like Saw. So yeah, here's the FPS game. We saw some of it in the last trailer. They shoot the fucking vinyl. I think I did the same thing. It seems to be essentially the same map. I'm not noticing any significant changes, except for just, like, a, the fact that it's a remake of it. Right? Spooky things sure do come towards you. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm really interested in seeing how much... With how much content we've seen in just these two trailers, I'm wondering how much of the FPS game part of it will be a... Like, I wonder how much of the game that part will take up. Like, I'm wondering how much they're going to branch outside of just that lost game that it's built around. Uh, flag. Uh, accounts. Part of the map. Map. No idea what to make of this. I'm just saying that I want you to be able to do your thing. I have no idea what this is. Um, different game. Minesweeper. Sorry, Mind Friend. Um, but yeah, and in this, there's like a lot of like live action stuff and a lot of analog horror kind of stuff. So I assume there's going to be cutscenes because it's there's no way this is meant to be like. Actually, maybe it's going to be videos found on the computer. Well, no, because it starts off with someone sitting down at the computer. I assume that's meant to be you. Uh, but see, I'm expecting an emphasis on cutscenes to some extent. Um, hopefully, good uh, utilization of the FPS game itself, though. I just, again, I just love this idea. No players online. I just, I just love that idea, and I'm so happy to see you get a full game because I really wanted to like the original. But again, if you're, not, if you didn't have any connection to the ARG happening around it, it's a pretty nothing game that's executed pretty all right. I'm really interested in seeing this. Um. Traverse the digital wasteland of a shooter game long abandoned, but don't let looks deceive you. The game is just a remnant FNAF reference distracting you from its real purpose. Uh, delve into really a fully realized faux 90s desktop environment. Download games from an obscure games forum. Search through files left by the previous owner and peel away the digital layers to uncover the conspiracy of the mysterious Capture the Flag game. Um, a wise man once said, a game is a window to its soul. With cutting-edge technology, unlock the power to merge two souls together. What would happen if you picked out your favorite games and fused them into one? Be warned that some corruption can occur. Fully realized faux 90s desktop, complete with, mines, complete with Minesweeper. Download games from this year game form. Yep. Combine. Yep. Find an old multiplayer game prototype and figure out its real purpose. Yep. Immerse yourself as you put together clues. Yep. And it's being worked on by these people. Shout out to them. Um... Really looking forward to this. Really looking forward to this. I think uh, I think this could be truly something great. I think this could be truly something great. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I really think this could be like an outstanding indie horror game. Again, I just, I love the concept. The execution seems to have so much detail to put into it. I really hope this turns out as great as it can be. Uh, so yeah, good luck to the devs on this one. Looking forward to it. Um, we got a little bit more. Okay, that's just that. This is the website. Sorry, forgot about that. This is the website. They have social media and stuff. Again, go show them love and support. All right, Buckshot Roulette. When I refresh the page, it's out. There it is. Buckshot Roulette Steam version is now available for purchase. And now that it's out, I can say that I was very surprised by this. This happened right before stream. Um, the like manager for the dev, the manager for the dev of this, um. Gave me a Steam key for this game. They they gave, they they emailed me and they gave me a Steam key for this and I was able to uh, activate it right before stream. Go away, a bit Ryan. Um, so that was very nice of them. 
Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. We'll probably stream this tomorrow, maybe. I'm not sure, but we're going to stream it sometime soon because this is not just a port, though that itself is fire. Shout out, shout out to them for doing this. I'm, I'm happy that it happened at all. But also, we covered this in the last stream. Um, the Steam edition of Buckshot Roulette also includes the full soundtrack. Nope, that's not what I'm trying to read. New items. There we go. <laughs> New items for the Steam release. There are completely original items uh, to the Steam release. Stuff we've never seen before. Um, you shut the fuck up. Um, yeah, there's completely new items exclusive to this version of the game. And also it has Steam achievements. 16, if I'm, if I'm not misremembering. Um, maybe I'll say here. Yep, 16 Steam achievements. So I'm looking forward to farming the achievements of this. Because this is just such a fun replayable game. It's so short and it's so simple. But like... It's so fun to replay. It's a very addictive formula. And the fact that there's going to be more of it, the fact that it will have um, Steam achievements to grind for and unlock, very excited for that. This is available for purchase uh, currently on sale for the first week. Uh, obviously, uh, very small difference, but it's currently on, it's on sale for the next week. And um, I think this game is very fun and very worth the very cheap price tag. This is Canadian currency, so if you're American, which I assume most people are, is even cheaper than this. Um, great game, great time. Big fan of this one. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm just so, I'm, I'm so happy this uh, dev is getting the attention they deserve for this one. So yeah, shout out to, uh, shout out to Backshot Roulette. Great game. We will be streaming it sometime soon. Again, thank you so much for the Steam key. That was a very nice surprise. Um, right, this is my final piece of news. Playtime with Percy. One of the best FNAF fan games of all time. So much so that it's transcended FNAF fan game, as far as I'm concerned. Top 5 fan game, easy. There is an official Percy Poodle, that's wrong, Percy Poodle plushie. And it's already fucking smashed the, fun, the, the goal. Like, it is already booming. Um, yeah. Percy Poodle from Playtime with Percy has a makeshift plush. And I just think that's exciting as fuck because I think it shows a step in fan games. Like, period. I think the fact that this fan game is so popular, so distinct, so, um, like, original, that it's able to accomplish this and, um... I, I think I think that is like a significant thing to happen, um, and uh, I I I I I highly recommend you go buy this if you're a fan of the game. I personally was a big fan of the game. I'll be picking one of these up. Um, Plays with Percy is a top five fan game in the FNAF scene very easily, and that says a lot because very passionate fan game scene, and there are some there are some fantastic ones, and this is one of the best, possibly the best. They, like if, it might just be the best um and yeah it's so cool to see uh that uh the game has gotten so much traction to be able to get 164 percent of the goal in a day that's so cool to see and the fact that this happened at all so cool to see shout out to fazzy shout out to playtime with percy team um yeah just i just really wanted to comment on this because i think this is a i think this is like a genuine landmark for the space and with that, we are done. However, I am... I, I was... Someone brought something at the start of the stream. And I'm realizing... I believe there's one more thing I can bring up. If I'm not stupid. Um, fucking what was it? <laughs> was it on Twitter? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, um, um... Fuck. Fuck. Okay, here's one of the two things. Where was the other thing? Right, there's three things actually related to this game. Okay, great. Um, hopefully it comes up if I look this up. Where, what, what, did I, am, am I, am I high? 
<laughs> Here it is. Okay, done. Cool. Let's talk about Roblox doors, because I neglected including that. <laughs> I completely neglected that doors exists. All right. Doors Retro Mode. That's out. That exists. Isn't that totally poggers? Shout out to Roblox Doors for Retro Mode. Um, and also, um, hi, I, yes, I know you love Doors. I'm, I'm fully aware. Uh, so yeah, Doors Retro Mode exists, but also the, um, the, I wonder if it'll be here. No? Okay. Um, and also, uh, the, like, hub area apparently got a complete overhaul, a complete I don't know how different it is, but apparently it looks a lot nicer now, and it's a whole different thing, and you can actually go outside of the building. So, doors update there. And also, this is what I saw. Uh, L Splash was asked, is there an estimated time for when Floor 2 will be out? Here's an image. Uh, here's, here's a teaser image. Our dream scenario is, in, is releasing it in the early summer, but it probably won't happen. So, Floor 2 might... Come out. Yeah, sorry. Retro mode is for April Fools. Probably should have mentioned that. It's an April Fools update, but it's a pretty good one. I couldn't be bothered to finish it because it's just kind of annoying. But for a joke, it's fire. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know where they said this is the thing. Like, right? They did a Q and A. That's where they said they did a Q and A. My bad. Um, yeah. So. Early summer, possibly, but they said that probably won't happen, but that does mean it's not that far away. You know what I mean? Um, like, if, if they, if it's, a, if it's even a possibility that Floor 2 could come out in early summer, then it can't be that far away. And also, 4 billion visits is huge. Like, look, I'm not a big Doors fan. I think Doors is just alright. <laughs> but it's really cool to see how successful Doors has been, and I'm so happy to see that Floor 2 is happening. Because I just genuinely believed for a little bit that it fucking wasn't going to. <laughs> I was I was fairly certain it just wasn't going to happen. Um, and that they were just putting it off as much as possible. But uh, it's happening. Floor 2 is happening. This year this means. Like there's no way. Like this this means there's no way it's not this year. Um, and yeah. Doors is impressive for a Roblox game. Like it absolutely is. And even outside of a Roblox game... Even though it's not really my thing, I don't think it's great. Um, it is on par and better than a lot of the indie horrors. I mean, like, like I use the word I use the term a lot, kind of loosely there, but no, it, it absolutely shines um, compared to some of what we see. Um, and you know what? Like, I, and when I say I'm not the biggest fan of Doors, Floor One is the only thing that's out, and also the Hunt thing that came out, the Back Doors, I think they called it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't think it's great. I don't love it. But Floor 2, uh, especially with how long it has been in development, will probably be a significant improvement. At least I really hope it is. So, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm really like, I think an improved version of Doors could be fire. Now, sure, an improved version of Doors just makes me think of all the additional Spookies Jump Scare Mansion content. But... <laughs> I think I think I think doors can be something very cool, and I, I'm looking forward to see a, like a, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it evolve. So that is uh, the thing I uh, foregore to include. And with that, we are done. We we are done with the news. That is the news I have for now. Um, some some big stuff is coming that I'm really excited about. I'd say the stuff I'm most excited for. Uh, it's really cool to see Bendy getting a game so soon. That's really weird and caught me off guard. Um, Buckshot Roulette, decided to play some more of that. Thank you so much again for the free Steam key. Was not expecting that at all, and I really appreciate it. And, uh, the thing I'm most excited for, though, that we talked about today, genuinely, probably is Crow Country. Because, well, again, there's a lack of survival horror representation in the indie sphere, likely just because those games are so big and difficult to make. But, like... I mean, we've seen it happen before. I'd like to see it more. I mean, like, <laughs> My Friendly Neighborhood was a huge success. And sure, that game probably wouldn't have gotten as much attention from the indie scene if it wasn't mascot horror. Um, but still, it, it, it accomplished a lot. And, um, and outside of the indie scene, survival horror is objectively the most popular type of horror game. So I, I want to see some more of it. I would really, I would really love to see some more of it. And Crow Country being in a style that's, like, so akin to my liking, 
um, is very nice. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to Crow Country. But yeah, uh, that's that's all the that's all the big stuff out of the way. Um, I'm pretty sure that's uh, all there is to talk about. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be all for me. This is the second stream of the day, so I'm I'm gonna get going. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you guys are liking this news format. Again, I'm not used to this. I never do this stuff. Um, but you guys really liked it the first time around. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as well. I don't know. I just think it's a good way to recap some stuff going on in the scene. Because again, I'm very committed to the scene. I care about this scene a lot. I play everything that fucking comes out. And I... I give everything the time of day. So this is a really good way. I feel like to recap stuff going on, uh, talk about some stuff to be excited about, get excited for some things that are on the way. Um, and again, like, uh, I, uh, there are people that do this in like video form and they obviously do a great job. You know, people like Johnny blocks, uh, do a great job of it. I just like this format. That's like not scripted and short. So we can just kind of, kind of talk about it. Obviously it's not good for like, financial stuff like like making news content consistently in short fo in shorter form that i can run minerals on will probably be a, a smarter idea on my part but i like this format where we can just kind of talk about it and i can interact with chat when necessary and uh i i enjoy this i enjoy it being more laid back so that way my other videos can be the ones i dedicate that time and effort to um speaking of which if you haven't watched my new video go watch it um, it's, it's about, it's about survival indie horror game inspired by, um, Half-Life, Dead Space, um, Doom, uh, those, some of those, those, those are some of the inspirations. Uh, it's gonna be fire. It's a very fun demo out right now. Mother Hub on Steam. Go play the demo and go watch my video. I'd appreciate it. All right. That's gonna be all for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it a lot. We'll be playing Buckshot Roulette soon. Uh, for the Steam release, and yeah, thank you guys so much for everything, and I will see you guys later, bye-bye.